You're listening to Sports Radio Detroit. Welcome to Grave Discussions. I am your host, Barnabas. And I am your other host, Samael. Welcome to episode 93, Such Easy Prey. Oh, those humans, mortals, <laughs> they are such easy prey. Disgusting. So guys, on today's show, we will be uh, kind of looking back on Color Out of Space, which we discussed last week, and talking about another uh pinkish type of uh, Lovecraftian adaptation in Stuart Gordon's From Beyond. Yep, and it was my first time watching this one. I knew about it for years. I have the Blu-ray, and I didn't watch it up until last night. And boy, I... I, Color out of space in this one were really fucking similar. Yeah, that's why I was telling you about it, like, you know, and I thought it would be a good kind of companion piece almost. Uh, aside from that, some scheduling conflicts, things like that kind of prevented us from seeing the turning still, which I heard was bad anyway. And then, uh, Gretel and Hansel, which I also heard was mainly not that great. I knew that one was going to be kind of divided. Um, but you know, it's still out in theaters. If you guys really wanted to check it out, I still plan on watching it at some point, but yeah, you know, I'm not like, uh, I'm not super thrilled about it. It's a story that we've already kind of seen a lot of times. And even in like an iteration, you know, I'd rather see something a little more original, a little more fresh. So yeah, we're going to be discussing from beyond a little bit later, kind of a bringing back the, the cult corner yes. uh, for this one here. It's been today. A while. It has. Yeah. We, we kind of haven't been uh, posting a lot on the website recently. We're going to try to come back and do some more cult corners and chopping blocks uh, on there but for today bringing it back and uh, i'm looking forward to to that discussion same so first of all we do have to give a shout out as always to our gracious host network sports radio detroit and you can find sports radio detroit on twitter instagram and facebook just look up srd sports radio detroit or you can check them out on sports radio also check out some of the merch they got Help support our family. Yeah, there's a cool little fanatics thing going on. So go to the site, check them out. But now uh, we've got some horror news to talk about. Uh, It's been a pretty eventful week. And uh, speaking of Gretel and Hansel, the director, uh, Osgood Perkins, is in the news yet again because he will be uh, writing and directing an episode of Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone. Yes, and he... Collab with Jordan Peele, much to his surprise, and, you know, especially that CBS was like, all right, you know, we're good, green light, we want you to do it, and uh, I heard it's going to be like some sort of meta episode, Mm -hmm. so I don't know what specifically that could mean. Yeah, I don't know, The, the meta episode in season one was like, I think the very last episode, and uh, it was pretty cool, you know, it was divided for some people. For this, I have no idea. I can only assume it's going to be some kind of fourth wall thing, or I don't even know. Like, the Twilight Zone can go so many different directions. Someone's yeah. going to say, like, in the in the episode that they're in a TV show called The Twilight Zone. That would be awesome. <laughs> well, you, you got to watch the season one one. It's, uh, it's kind of similar. I kind of didn't watch <laughs> after the... The comedian. Uh, I like the airplane one. So, like, the, the first. The nightmare at whatever. Yeah. 50,000 feet or whatever. That one was good. Uh, the comedian one was just, like... Yeah. Uh, I mean, there there were a couple that were pretty sweet still. The, the meta one there basically has them, like... Jordan Peele is in it as Jordan Peele, and they're on the set of The Twilight Zone. Spoiler alert, I guess. Sorry. Um, and it f- actually follows this one writer who is going around trying to do some like last minute changes to this episode. And it kind of goes off 
from there, I'm not going to spoil anything more, but that's kind of the the basic premise. All right. So I have no idea, but uh, Osgood Perkins is a pretty cool horror director. He's done like um, The Black Coat's Daughter, I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House. So those are both kind of like slow burn, you know, type of horror movies, kind of ethereal horror movies, I guess. Um, so I expect this one to be kind of in that same style, but should be cool. Uh, there's not really much more news about season two of the show, but, uh, apparently will also feature an episode written by Jordan Peele, which is pretty cool. So I'm pretty excited about this next article. Actually, what, why don't you uh, tell us what's going on, Sam? So, uh, there's two new movies and one of them is Fatal Frame and the other one we haven't seen since the shitty second movie, Mm -hmm. we are getting a new Silent Hill movie. Yeah, it's been... I uh, don't care about Fatal Frame, (laughs) but I care about Silent Hill. Well, they're both pretty important, I guess. I don't think... Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's ever been a Fatal Frame movie before. So this is kind of cool, you know, for that fact alone. Uh, Maybe in, like, Japan or something, but I don't know if there's ever been, like, a mainstream, like, American version you know i don't think so yeah i don't think so silent hill obviously there was the uh, original film from 2006 was actually pretty damn cool (laughs) the sequel was not that great john snow was in it who cares yeah (laughs) um but now we're getting new films by christoph gans who actually directed the first silent hill movie and so you know there were definitely flaws with that movie but i think overall it was a pretty good adaptation of silent hill and uh i i hope that these movies kind of have that same sort of like atmosphere and stuff i honestly the most important thing about silent hill is the atmosphere like the monsters are just there to justify like the eeriness and all that stuff uh as long as it doesn't like turn to like cgi ish you know because it seems to be the case for a lot of like ghost or demonic centered horror movies nowadays i just don't want to see a bunch of lame ass cgi I and mean, that's really my only concern with any of these newer movies coming out is yeah cgi is getting better but our ability to recognize cgi is also like at its best right now because i mean we're noticing it ruining more and more mm. movies that are supposed to be good but i don't know man C- cgi is what i'm worried about especially you know it's 2020 like it's the route everyone goes with. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I mean, the CGI in the 2006 movie was whatever. I mean, it was super noticeable, obviously. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it completely ruined it, uh, but it did take me out of a few parts. But the actual practical effects in that movie were really cool. Uh, so I do hope they stick to that as much as possible, like you just said. Um, that's That'll probably also be my, my biggest thing. As far as actually like adapting the games and stuff, Honestly, I never really played either of those franchises when I was younger because they came out around when I was like super young and my parents were a little more strict with like, you know, what I played. Uh, So I didn't really play those, but it's still cool. I mean, I know that they're like popular horror games and they freaked everybody the fuck out when they came out. It's going to be hard to do that now with how desensitized people are, but they could still be good movies. And I'm, I'm glad that the original director is on for them, too. We'll see. Yeah. So uh, once there's more info, we'll try to let you guys know about it. Finally, uh, this has been in the news before, but I guess there's new news about it. So uh, as we all know, there was supposed to be a Lost Boys TV show on the CW. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> uh, I guess it fell through. No surprise. <laughs> now there's a new pilot that the CW has ordered up and I, I I'm guessing that they're moving along with it so yeah it's pretty cool um I don't want to shit on it completely just because it's not the original doesn't mean it's going to be fucking trash you know I like to give everything a tra- chance unless the trailer looks like trash that was a tongue twister uh, <laughs> I like to give everything a chance unless the trailer looks like trash okay yeah uh, I do but we haven't seen anything, and I don't know how I feel about it since, like, the first, like, since everyone was recast, and everything was scrapped, and now they're coming back to it. I just don't know how to feel about that, man. Like, 
I feel like they're just rehashing anything from the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Just to make a quick buck. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but it's not a good thing either. Um, Sure, we want to see, you know, Lost Boys get resurrected because they had however many three films, right? I have three. I only watched the first. I'm not a big fan on sequels, but I don't know what made them want to bring this back. Uh, I have a feeling like, like I said, just a rehash of like 80s shit for... For money, because all the fans are complaining, like, oh, 80s movies are better, this and that, but Mm. let's be real, you're never going to get back the original feel of the 80s, the original look, like the way the actors are dressed, their hairstyles, the way they talk, you know, calling each other jerks, and it's like a big time insult, like, we are never going to get that back. I think the best thing to do is just, if those are your golden years, the 1980s for horror movies, just, just keep those, you know, watch them whenever you can. But let's just stop trying to, like, bring back something that was, like, what, fucking 40 years ago, you know? I mean, it's mm. it's not healthy to hold on to the past that much. Sure, like, you can always go back and watch these movies, but stop trying to, like, recreate them. Like, I, like next thing they're going to do, what, 976 Evil? Like <laughs> They might. They fucking might. Wait, Freddy Krueger directed a movie? Let's watch it. I bet we could make it. Super cool modern day with cell phones and then someone calls the hotline and... They probably would. Stop giving them ideas. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But like I said before, you know, it really all just depends on the book. You know, if people stop, like, actually being interested in it, despite all the complaining and shit, then they might stop making them. But I guess for what it's worth, having it on the CW kind of makes sense just because even in the original film... You know, it's a whole big thing about them being kids and, you know, exploring their, their freedom as as young people. And it's set, you know, on the on this, like, boardwalk and all that stuff. It's, it's prime time for just even longer, like, teen bullshit, you know. And they, yeah. can, they can definitely do that with a show, like, on the CW. So, I'm guessing that they're, they're going to go that route, very Stranger Things-esque, you yeah. know. And then have vampires, I guess. But, uh vampires in the lost boys movie were actually super cool hopefully they kind of stick with that sort of aesthetic and you know not not try to dumb it down for the teen crowd too much you know like still have that kind of darker sort of tone to it i i hope i hope so man like uh it's just gonna be like i just think it's like you said really stranger things-esque and sabrina-esque teeny bopper shit Mm -hmm. but sabrina's fire and i don't know if they can do the same thing for this. Like, I don't know, dude. I'm trying to be hopeful, but, like, I was... I've been, for the most part, disappointed with, like, almost everything that's been, like, a remake or a rehash besides, like, Creep Show. Yeah. And Halloween and... Hmm. It just doesn't feel like it belongs now, you know? Now it's just a fucking trend to do remakes. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see about it. Uh, This new pilot is being directed by Marco Siega, who did Batwoman, uh, which I haven't haven't watched, but apparently it's not that great. Uh, So, you know, keep an eye out. Once there's more info, we'll we'll try to let you guys know about it. Uh, Now we've got a few trailers here, and then we'll dive into our main segment. The first is for a brand new Into the Dark entry on Hulu, coming out February 7th, called My Valentine. I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, it's really whatever to me. I probably won't watch it. Lifetime drama thriller. (laughs) Yeah, but this one is about uh, a pop star who, I guess, goes through some shit uh, with her uh, producer or manager, whoever, and then he comes back into her life and is representing this new artist that looks exactly like her and basically, like, stole all her songs or some crap like that. I guess it was modeled off of some real life drama between some people I've never fucking heard of. Yeah, that's what I read in the comments. <laughs> and uh yeah, it looks it looks okay. It just looks like a, you know, thriller. The cool thing is that it, it seems to be isolated to this one location. Uh the coloring looks okay, but other than that it looks kind of boring. Like the characters look fucking annoying, you know. Isolation isn't necessarily a good thing, especially with like a like a, like a premise that's so kind of like bland to me and mm-hmm. I don't know what happened with Into the Dark they're kind of like they started off with the body which was kind of like thriller okay then they 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 went to that one where this girl's dad is the killer mm-hmm. and 
he killed her mom or whatever. And it seems to be straying further and further from horror, which is, I don't know what's going on now. Like, I don't know what, what's happening to horror altogether. I don't know if people are just getting lazy and it's, I guess it's easier to write thrillers or mystery slash thrillers, but yeah, the only thrillers I can really enjoy are like Halloween, Disturbia, Get Out, you know, those, those type. I'm not into the whole and bad times at the El Royale, but movies like, I mean, episodes like Into the Dark, like they've all just been like pseudo horror. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't like pseudo horror. Yeah, I can agree with that. I mean, if it's, if it's a thriller, it has to at least have something interesting or unique about it, you know, because everything else, like most of the Into the Dark stuff really just seems very similar, you know, e- even just like the dialogues between characters and like these v- super familiar like sets and situations. It's it's like, all right, I mean, I, I get it, but I was really hoping that they were going to dive more into like some, you know, supernatural stuff, maybe some like I don't know, urban legends and, you know, just cool, cooler things like that. Like the school spirit slasher looked all right. Some of them have seemed kind of interesting, but for the most part, it's, it's very much uh, about trying to incorporate like the social message aspect and, and just featuring these kind of like weird, uninspired and kind of boring characters. And I I don't know. I feel like the whole series, like the past, honestly, like six episodes have been like lackluster. I've, I've heard some good things about a few of them, but even those really did not seem very uh, horror focused. So, I don't know. Kind of, kind of having mixed feelings about this series. This one, not sure about either, but if you're down to check it out, it's coming out February 7th. Next up is another uh, series adaptation. This one is of uh, War of the Worlds, which I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I saw two. Di- I watched two different trailers. At first, I was watching the one for like, I don't know what it was, like CBS or some shit. But then I was mm-hmm. like, oh no, that's not the one. It's the one with, for Epics, the one with the dude from Hereditary. Yeah. And uh, I watched that one, and it just seems. Eh. So glad they didn't show the aliens and whatnot. But yeah, I I kind of read some little spoilers about the aliens, so I don't know if you want to know or not, but uh. I mean, if you've seen like the 2000s adaptation or any of the War of the World stuff, you know that that's usually like those freaky big aliens, you know, and I guess that those aren't really in this one. So I'm not really sure what to expect. It looks like the whole global catastrophe kind of angle of the story might be played out okay. I guess there's like an international cast and a lot of the dialogue is in French or something like that, which was conveniently cut out of this trailer. Um, but apart from that, like the actual, even horror thriller elements don't seem amazing. So, uh, I'm not like super thrilled to watch this one. Um, but it could be okay. I mean, the, the cast looks good. The, the camera work and lighting and stuff like that look good. You know, I'm just, I don't know. I'm uninterested. Yeah. It's like, why, why would you want to really like drag this story out? It's going to turn into another, like falling skies or walking dead type thing or something like that i don't know it's just it's just not necessary and it doesn't look super intriguing so me yeah i'll pass yeah that's fair so uh if you guys are interested that one's coming out february 16th on epics apparently it also has already come out overseas uh somewhere but oh yeah in europe it came out a few months ago yeah like on canal or like fox or something in europe but uh Let's move on. This last trailer has been kind of the talk uh, of the day. I think it just dropped today. And this one is for the new Saw film coming out this summer called Spiral from the Book of Saw. Starring Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, who would have thought? That's a dope-ass cast, honestly. From the looks of it, um, I really can't make out what the hell is going on. Uh, This is allegedly supposed to take place way after the original Jigsaw is long gone uh, i don't know if it's going to continue with uh dr gordon who is the new jigsaw as we saw in <laughs> jigsaw oh, yeah well not in jigsaw in part was uh, it? it was like the one for, i still haven't seen jigsaw but i know that he, i saw jigsaw there's a new jigsaw yeah there's like two new jigsaws oh 
I don't know, dude. <laughs> I, I got really kind of lost in like the later timeline of the film franchise. And I, yeah, like I said, I still haven't seen Jigsaw, but the last few movies, I, I don't know, they were a little convoluted. So I, I think he was Jigsaw at the end of like one of them. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's not immediately clear what's going on here. You know, it, it seems like Jigsaw is a part of this world because the, su- the you know, whole uh, summary seems to imply that the city like was plagued by him before or something like that. But again, it doesn't mention him by name. It does show his like spiral kind of pattern thing that you can see like on yeah, like, the, the mask and stuff. Yeah. But uh, it, it's not direct at all. So this could very well be kind of a spiritual type of sequel or something like that. But we can assume it takes place in the future. I guess Samuel Jackson is Chris Rock's dad in this movie, which is hilarious to me, but, um, but, but that's that. And I guess, you know, it's like a detective family. So and Jigsaw is Chris Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. I mean, no. So, so, you know, Chris Rock actually doesn't look half bad in like the serious role. I'm sure that there might be some light comedy here and there, but, um, he looks okay. Samuel Jackson's awesome. We even got a motherfucker out of him. We in did, the trailer, we did, which is great. So th- they seem fine. The actual tone of it looks pretty cool. Some people have said it's similar to um, like Seven, which I can see a little bit. Yeah, but the later Saw movies did kind of have this whole true crime element with the police and everything. Oh yeah. So, I mean, that's th- this is not like super far removed from that. No, no. So there, there are people saying like this doesn't even feel like Saw. I mean, yeah, because it's not directly, you know, implicating like Jigsaw and all that stuff. And you're not seeing people being tortured. Yeah, there's like one quick scene of like a trap. Yeah, exactly. When he was sitting at the fucking table, the white dude or whatever the hell. And then we seen Chris Rock in chains. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Yeah, which is cool, you know, because I hope we get some nice surprises. Saw has always been a a series that has relied on, like, the twists and turns and everything, you know, with, like, Hoffman later on and all that stuff. And, you know, having all these different timelines and things like that. Uh, Hopefully this one isn't super convoluted, but I'm interested to see what kind of, like, mystery it presents. Because I think that has always been one of the positive things about Saw, you know, it gets you sucked in. To like what's happening yeah and it just like keeps you guessing like dude what the hell is going on there's just so many twists throughout the whole series that sort of became uh i know it was easy to get lost you know like in movie six or seven or whatever but i don't know we'll see with this one um i hope the traps are cool every saw movie seems to have to like one up everything else that has already come out with like you know, more fucked up traps or bigger traps or something like that. Uh, So I wonder if we're going to see something like that with this one, if it's going to get like the human centipede three treatment where it's going to be like a trap for like 500 people or something. Oh my God. (laughs) I don't know about that, but, uh, but I think it actually looks like it has some potential. So Um, that's coming out May 15th in theaters. If you guys are interested. So uh, that's it for the news guys. We've got our main discussion about From Beyond coming up, uh, but that's going to be in just a few moments. First, a few messages from some other SRD shows, so stick around. Hi, this is Jason Pinkham from Pucking Around and Spinning the Wheels on Sports Radio Detroit. Check us out every Sunday over on the SRD Hockey Feed on Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Podbean, iTunes, and Stitcher. That's SRD Hockey in your search bar. New episodes every week. Hi, this is Chris. And this is Roger. And if you like Tigers baseball, Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball, analytics, pop culture references, movies, sports, food, check us out. Look for Tigers SRD on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. Welcome back, creeps. So as promised in today's episode, we are going to be going back to the cult corner and discussing Stuart Gordon's From Beyond. First time watch for me, and I love Lovecraft shit. 
Uh, I think he's a fucking weirdo, Mm -hmm. which makes for some awesome movie adaptations of his books. Uh, I love The Unnameable. I love The Color Out of Space. I love Castle Freak. So I was I was pretty excited going into this one, not having seen it. Yeah, um, I mean it, it's pretty wild that you haven't, but um, it's also your first time seeing Reanimator, like not too long ago. Yes, so yes. I'm, I'm glad that you're getting into these movies more. Same director for both of those movies and for, and for Castle Freak, actually. I, I would have assumed yeah. so because of you know Jeffrey Combs, yeah, appearing in <laughs> two out of the three, and Barbara Crampton, yeah. Actually, no. Well, he's in he's in all three. He was in Castle Freak as well. Was he? All, all of them were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just <laughs> he's doing the uh, the Blumhouse thing. Just <laughs> yeah. He was the first one to do it. Just bringing back all the actors. More of a Rob Zombie thing. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But you know, I mean, it, it makes sense too. I think a lot of directors did that. Uh, just based on budgetary reasons. You know, if you have people that you're cool with, you know that they're awesome. And what they do, it makes sense to bring them on for, you know, things like this. And I thought it was totally fine. Jeffrey Combs is great. Barbara Crampton's great. And I thought this movie was sick. This was actually released only like a year after Reanimator. Oh, wow. Uh, And actually is often, I think, overshadowed by it. Like, it's probably still one of his uh, best known movies. But... Usually, when you think about Stuart Gordon, it's it's always Reanimator. Uh, but I think this movie actually does deserve praise, and I think when it comes up, people do flock to it, and they're like, "Oh man, From Beyond, it's great!" You know? Oh yeah, I can see why. And um, so I I did want to know your thoughts on it, just initial impressions. Uh, at first, I didn't know what to expect, and then I saw some science majigger, and they started talking about the pineal gland and i was like "Ooh, i'm gonna like this one Mm. and then apparently that machine increases the size of the pineal gland and then i knew something was gonna happen with uh pretorius yeah because uh i remember seeing like clips from this movie when he was like that that fucking monster thing Mm, i knew he was gonna be the one to be it as soon as he opened the door after uh what's his name after crawford knocked on his door and i was like oh man that's the villain right there and uh i thought the as soon as i saw the colors like the purplish color i was like oh lovecraft all the way like yeah. that's kind of been a thing with all these like lovecraft movies that like that pinkish purplish color mm-hmm. that's quote unquote at least from the characters in the movie like an indescribable color and i knew it was gonna go like into like some esoteric type shit like as soon as uh as soon as i saw that uh pro uh, what's his name Pretorius get his head twisted off. I was like, oh man, he's, uh, they're dabbling in some shit. And then as the movie continues on, you see Pretorius is just getting more and more monster-like and all that (laughs) goo on him and the Vaseline, as I call it, (laughs) the pink Vaseline. And, uh, I enjoyed Jeffrey Combs. Uh, he turned into that bald creature with the snaky third eye protruding out of his head. Kind of remind me of Mind Ripper. Uh, with Lance oh, Henriksen, yeah. okay. that's what it really reminded me of. And uh, as uh, as the movie goes on, uh, the more and more like that, uh, what's her name, McMichael's like interacts with that machine. The more sh- <laughs> this is what you meant to me about. I don't know how I don't remember how sexual yeah. this movie was, <laughs> and like everyone's getting boners and everyone's horny, and apparently that's what happens when your pineal gland is stimulated. I guess, I, I guess. I've never <laughs> experienced raging boners from doing. <laughs> third eye meditations but (laughs) from like radio waves or whatever (laughs) yeah apparently this will this will cause some significant changes to that and uh i don't know man i thought overall it was a great movie i like the practical effects Mm -hmm. besides like the the snakes you know like yeah like the the overhead projector snakes you know low budget for 1986 (laughs) it's understandable but the other practical effects were fucking great Mm -hmm. the slime monster and i don't know everything was great I mean, I, I don't know what else to. I like the acting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeffrey Combs killed it. So did uh, Barbara Crampton. Yeah, Ted Sorrell was really good too. He uh, he played the the part really well, and it had some of its humorous moments. Like, oh, it bit off his head like a 
gingerbread man. Yeah. That and then the the whole um the whole Crawford calling uh Edward a fucking a eunuch and he called him impotent yeah. and like wait till she finds out you you're impotent, you're you're a pervert, you're this and that and then they go into his room and they find him like videos of him whipping a chick. Yeah, all kinds of like BDSM type yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean he was a genius, but um I don't know. Do you think he planned on any of this happening? Do you think that uh Pretorius was trying to transcend and become a monster? Or do you think he was just trying to make some initial discovery? I mean, they didn't really say what they were they were just studying the effects of the pineal gland, but mm-hmm. I think Pretorius really wanted that because like I think mentioning the impotence was really important because since he was impotent, he would want, you know, that to to transcend and or ascend, whatever you want to call it. He wanted mm-hmm. to transcend to that, to becoming like something different because you saw he got his kicks out of like just visual stimulation. Yeah. Because as soon as, you know, um, what's his name? Crawford sees like what he sees. He's like, oh, see, now you understand. So there was no need for boners and all that stuff since he yeah. transcended to like, into like something completely a different species that has literally never existed before <laughs> it, it's kind of like like a vampire thing almost like you know once you're a vampire then you don't really need to have sex or anything like that but it's just so much better this is like that kind of shit like well my pineal gland is 30 times larger so now it's all just great <laughs> yeah <laughs> or some shit like that i don't know plus i mean i, I guess you get to see Barbara Crampton in like a dominatrix outfit. So yeah, that was that was nice, dude. Barbara Crampton was like a huge like indie horror star. Her in butt the was 80s. ahead of its time. I mean, you're not wrong. I, you're not I know, wrong. I know. <laughs> but uh, you know, so I guess for that specific reason, if you'll allow us to be kind of pervs ourselves, I think it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, it was really just more of like a side effect with them being stuck in the house and being, you know, influenced by this thing and everything like that. I guess it was either go that route or go down some Hellraiser type fucking route. And then, you know, that would have been stupid because yeah. it would just be like they're ripping off a Hellraiser. So I guess it kind of made sense. Uh, the whole time we're seeing, you know, Jeffrey Combs character, Dr. Tillinghast, like devolving into this like like frank from it's always sunny like i just want to be pure like just yeah. fucking naked bald really weird he's eating brains yeah but i i thought that the entire thing was cool um your your question to me whether he thought he knew that he was uh going to get into all that probably not i don't think he knew about all the flying jellyfish monsters and yeah. that he was gonna like turn into a monster and shit like that um but I think initially, yeah, they were trying to sort of figure out a way to stimulate that, like, sixth sense. Yeah. And uh, interestingly, I actually read the original short story that this is based off of, which is also called From Beyond. Okay. Um, all, All of Lovecraft's, like, you know, old stuff is actually online just for free. So it's really short. It's, like, seven pages or something. And um, even in that one, in that one, there's no Pretorius. Oh, really? Yeah, because this character is kind of based off of, I think, something with an S, Pretorius, from uh, the the Bride of Frankenstein. Okay. So, kind of like a little Easter egg. But in the original short story, it's just Tillinghast and, like, the the narrator, who you don't really know who that is, but it's just like a friend of Crawford Tillinghast. And Tillinghast's whole thing is, like, that he was also trying to, like, find a way to basically open up his third eye or you know transcend his senses that was like his whole thing and he kind of incidentally discovered the the beyond (laughs) where everyone's a jellyfish monster yeah Yeah. (laughs) that that is mentioned in there but there's like so much more in the short story which i'm guessing that they couldn't really pull off with like the budget they had so they went this route with like the the pretorius monster and stuff like that but the original story the main character is like entranced by tilling gas to like forces him to uh see all this crap and there's like other worlds and you know like super high reaching columns black columns and these like otherworldly beings and all this type of shit 
which obviously isn't in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the little jellyfish things and the mention of like the color and stuff like that are there. So definitely some similarities to Color of Space. And it's kind of described as like ultraviolet, which which exists now in one way or another. But back then, I'm sure to Lovecraft, it was like this, you know, unseeable, unattainable color or whatever. So it was very like alien. I like the fact that uh, a lot of the Lovecraft stuff is kind of like ambiguous that in in the fact that is this is this like another dimension is this a scientific anomaly mm -hmm. or is this esoteric is this supernatural yeah. and the correct answer is it's always both i feel basically yeah because even in the short story um you know tilling was like this mad genius kind of guy but it was really once he actually succeeded in his experiment that he just got so sucked into it and i guess he learned how to like avoid the creatures and all this stuff and he really seemed like the antagonist of that story because he had like so much knowledge now that he's like seen the beyond and he just wants to force the the protagonist to to also see it but he wants to kill him and he just basically has turned into like this malevolent being who just doesn't give a shit anymore and you know that's kind of the thing in this one too Pretorius just turns into this like monster and he's just like you know come over yeah. you know to my side and you'll be able to fuck as much as you want basically and all your desires blah, blah, blah. i still see uh dr Catherine mcmichaels as the main antagonist because initially they were trying to do the experiment just to prove that crawford wasn't insane they did it and then she wanted to do it again yeah. and as the the cop dude mentioned he's like i've seen this look on the streets before he's like you're acting like a junkie you know, and that's exactly what was going on. If she could just like not keep turning that machine on, yeah. after if after the first time they were like, okay, no more, I believe you. Even the fucking cop was like, okay, it's legit. I believe, I believe everything. So we gotta stop this. Uh, he's innocent. He's not fucking crazy. It, it was a legit experiment. We need to just leave that shit alone. Mm -hmm. And if they just had left off there, it would have been fine. But you know. Uh, stupid white people shit, as we mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in our in our pre-production of Grave Discussions mm, notes, yeah. we were always going to talk about these type of things, and here's one of them. It just comes up all the time. She is the fucking antagonist, because literally, it's literally all of her fault. Mm. Sure, no one forced, you know, Pretorius to be evil, subjectively evil, you know, from his standpoint. Mm-hmm who knows what he knows now that he's like transcended it seems like he's always had that kind of personality anyway mm -hmm. but she she had been established from the beginning as like you know only in it for like the fame and the knowledge so that she could you know get her name out there and shit like that so and she then was we, never gonna give up and then we get um speaking of that they were like oh she's only doing it for notoriety and all that stuff but then you know we see her open up to crawford and her dad was a schizophrenic, and he basically rotted mm -hmm. in, like, a mental hospital. But we don't know how much if, of that is true, or if that was her addictive personality fabricating a story just so they can continue on with the experiment, because she wanted her, she wanted more pineal gland stimulation. Yeah. I feel like her whole, like, basically personality, like, that whole aspect of her was kind of thrown away toward the end, like, not explored too too much anymore like she just always would come off as kind of shitty until she basically wasn't under the influence of the whole resonator or whatever and she but she was almost kind of like the tilling gas of the short story of this movie because even crawford tilling gas in this movie was really only malevolent when he was under the effect of the resonator and yeah. then at the end he basically redeemed himself or tried to redeem himself well, yeah she bit off his third eye yeah. his pineal gland was protruding through his head like a snake mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if that's some satanic symbolism the third eye and the snake you know as if the pineal gland is something satanic something a lot of religions say that you shouldn't tap into because you know you're 
and it's basically like a gift from the devil this and that you know like mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of ways you can look at this movie i see crawford and bubba as like the main victims mm, yeah poor Ma- bubba. mainly <laughs> poor bubba dude i fucking yeah. loved bubba ken ken for he's fantastic he's awesome i was hoping he would live honestly but yeah. not with that blonde bitch not with her <laughs> her junky personality yeah. but crawford was n- the victim turned temporary villain mm-hmm. but uh I don't know. I I feel like he would have been better off sitting in that asylum. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I mean, obviously breaking him out was the kind of catalyst for everything happening again. He didn't want to go back. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you know, but he was fine sitting in there. Yeah, but she of course had to. So, honestly, it, it's a pretty com- complex like dynamic which I I kind of appreciate cuz I, I don't know, like you kind of don't care about her whole, you know, notoriety type shit until only, you realize that it's because of that that this happened. You know? Still, though, I only cared about Crawford and Bubba. Yeah. Mostly Bubba because he was like 100% against <laughs> all of this. Yeah. He was literally the most, he was the voice of reason in this. He was just there to like make sure no crazy shit happened and it did. <laughs> it's always the voice of reason that gets like put down because then like, because then it's like, then it's like anyone's ball game like if the voice of reason is dead then how are the other like internally struggling characters gonna like function and what Mm. decisions are they gonna make i mean i was saying it from the beginning like yo if we're gonna go she's like oh you could we could sleep on it and then you know think about it he's like after we sleep we're getting up and we're leaving yeah it seems like these uh types of characters started coming out more as the 80s kind of went on you know because i think they were trying to avoid everybody being fucking stupid like every other 80s movie because i mean honestly from 1980 to like 1985 like all the characters were like really dumb besides the final girl Mm -hmm. usually yeah or the final guy but that's true i mean i think every horror movie needs a voice of reason but i think in every horror movie the voice of reason does need to die because think about it without if the voice of reason stayed, there would really be no real like climax. There would be there would be no struggle. So like, and we're all curious. Curiosity killed the cat, and we'd all rather like take that chance and see what happens in like a weird situation mm-hmm. than listening to someone's like, "Hey, don't open that demon book," yeah, and see for ourselves because I think that's our downfall. It's our curiosity. Like, it's the most important takeaway for me of this movie was like Bubba needed to die because like. He was kind of, like, <laughs> preventing the plot from, like, continuing onward because yeah. he was just too... He had too much common sense. He was... He was strong-willed, too. Exactly. Yeah. But Crawford was weak because of the trauma. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's her name? McMichaels was weak because of the psychological manipulation from that machine. Yeah. So and like, her own ego. And her own ego. And her wants to just you know, turn this whole thing into, like, a big thing rather than just, like, all right, he's innocent, leave it alone. She's like, no, I want to make a scientific discovery and help schizophrenic people. But, like I said, the voice of reason is there to be sacrificed because the voice of reason is literally the opposite of what you want in these horror movies. If it was, if if the voice of reason lived, then nobody would have died. Yeah. (laughs) It's like the stoner dude in Cabin in the Woods. Exactly. Yeah, I can't have that. Gotta have people dying. We have to. Plus, it's a Lovecraft movie, so basically nothing has to follow the rules, you know, because it's all just existential and means nothing anyway. Remember, fuck you. Yeah, oh yeah, (laughs) fuck you, for sure. So that's, again, I I think Color Out of Space probably touched on that whole aspect a little bit better, uh, because this one definitely played out a little bit more like your typical kind of movie you know it had this each had, act and you know it had a climax and the protagonist eventually kind of like saved the day and so and this one had more of an explanation as to why everything's happening yeah mm-hmm. pineal glance see other things transcend why not and then color out of space was just like yo uh fuck you i hate you yeah and you're nothing it's not important what's happening to you you're literally just like everyone else watching this movie mm-hmm. you're not special this would happen to you and you couldn't fight it no matter what there is no fighting it well, From Beyond was like, hey, let's see what happens if you take someone who's traumatized, someone who's egotistical, and someone who has too much common sense, 
And then add in, like, <laughs> extra dimensional beings. Yeah, basically. Yeah, open up their their pineal glands or third third eyes or whatever and see what happens. <laughs> so see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's my takeaway from it, too. Crawford, traumatized. Mm-hmm. So his third eye being more opened caused him to be like, yo, this is not safe. This mm-hmm. is like, he had to experience that trauma in order to realize that. Yeah. Uh, McMichaels was like, we need to learn more about it when her third eye was open. And then Bubba was like, nothing like both of them. Even with his shit, like, who knows how much his third eye opened during those processes when that machine was on. Even with that, he was like, yeah, no, we still got to get out of here. Yeah. That's, that's what shows you, like, who was the smartest one. Like, how did they act after the pineal gland stimulation? And Bubba, like, had it right. We need to get the fuck out of here. This is not normal. McMichael's, oh, let's see what happens. Crawford, ah! Like, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was definitely that very, like, sturdy, just strong-willed character that w- was actually kind of resistant to, you know, the the temptation of the machine and everything like that. Not because he was, like a scientist or super smart in that aspect, but just because he had like a lot of heart, a lot of soul. And, you know, he had that uh, ability to kind of stand firm and be like, this is not okay. Yeah. Let's get the fuck out of here. You know, but of course they wouldn't listen to him. So, I mean, I like the character dynamics. I think they were all done well. Uh, and, but yeah, there was definitely a lot more kind of explanation and science stuff in this movie. Whereas even in the short story, there wasn't really like a ton of that. It was, it was very much kind of similar to color of space where it was just, you know, he's like in this chair and he's experiencing all these things and he can't do anything about it because if he moves, then, then those things are going to like eat him. Yeah. And that was kind of a thing in this movie too. Although I didn't quite feel that kind of urgency from it, but it was still cool seeing those things floating around and, and you know, and them standing in that pink light and everything. So, uh, aesthetically, it was cool. I think the characters are actually pretty interesting, like we've been saying. Acting and everything was great. Score was good. So, I, I really enjoyed this movie overall. I think it, it shouldn't get overshadowed too much by Reanimator and all those other movies. I think it does stand out on its own. And as far as being like a sci-fi horror movie goes, it's probably one of the better ones out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. The... I like this one. I like the thing. Mm -hmm. So far, these two are, like, the only really, like, super memorable, like, sci-fi horror movies from the 80s for me. The rest of them are, like, okay, but I don't know. I really like this one. I'm probably going to revisit it again. This is one of those movies, like, you have to watch more than once. Uh, I did not know that initially. (laughs) You know, I thought I was just going to be like, oh, Lovecraft. Mm Mm-hmm. Cool, if I ever want to be weirded out again, let me watch this one. But like I said, this one had more existential meaning, I want to say, than Color Out of Space. Color Out of Space was just nihilistic. Yeah. This one was existential as opposed to nihilistic. And this one was more on like the side of ethics, too, because like mm-hmm. you even see that doctor like abuse it, trying to abuse uh, Dr. McMichael's, like, electroshock therapy. Yeah. Well, that's against the law. I am above the law. Like, you know, like... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely... It's got a bigger cast of, of people. It tries to make them all seem human. You know, it takes place in various locations as well. So, it, overall, it just kind of feels like a bigger story than Colorado Space. So, oh, yeah. it makes sense that it wouldn't just be just completely fuck you and everything that you are and there's no escape you know this one like i mentioned before kind of had more of like that hope type aspect to it and that kind of story and no one had a necronomicon in this one (laughs) that is true yeah just just a psychic wave energy machine that you know produced these floating tentacle monsters that that hospital though (laughs) uh the name of the hospital the name uh it appeared i forgot that name appears in a lot more. Was it like Miskatonic? Or yeah, something? yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that yeah, that's just that's one like of the an, common. It's all. It's in every fucking <laughs> movie, like with this guy. Yeah, because it's all usually set in like the same area of like New England. So Miskatonic University is in uh, Arkham, I think. But it's just it's just a prevalent like place. Like it's one of the main. Arkham, you said. Yeah. 
Damn, there's a Arca and Arkham and Sabrina, so that might also be Ooh, in the same universe maybe. when you think about it. Yeah, could it be. is. It is esoteric as well. Yeah, that that, uh, that very well could be. I mean, a lot of places even just use stuff like that as like little Easter eggs, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, having Miskatonic and stuff is cool. But yeah, I love this movie overall. I can't really say too much more about it. I think we touched on a lot of it. Again, I I really enjoy it. Uh, I I do always forget about all the sexual stuff, but I think it fits. It makes sense. The practical effects are really, really cool. Uh, Done by the late, great John Carl Buechler, if I'm not mistaken. So I like revisiting this movie uh, every now and then. Especially just to see the Pretorius like creature. That's probably the best part. Of yeah, that's movie. that's what I was really excited about, and I wanted to see like that ultraviolet color because mm. like I knew from the cover and like from the trailers that I saw it was gonna have like that's my favorite lighting. Like this, I call it the Suspiria lighting. Mm. That's in all of these like weird, like esoteric movies. But I I did want to see Pretorius uh in like his like alien form. Mm-hmm. So I, that's the main thing I saw from like all of these like like famous images of from beyond like all the ones on instagram and facebook and, like mm-hmm. people post a picture of it what movie am i watching and i knew right away i was like from beyond like you like it i was like i haven't seen it <laughs> <laughs> i know i almost uh, kind of forget sometimes that jeffrey combs character even turns into that walking penis with a <laughs> with a third yeah. third eye sticking out of him yeah um I, but it's still cool i think it's still an effective cool. makeup and... walking penis sounds like a punk band oof yeah, right we're gonna do a revival of 80s punk rock oh god we're the walking penises all right <laughs> no we're just the walking penis we're just all one penis one. oh man you're the balls i'm the shaft we need a head <laughs> it's like the human centipede but everyone's just wearing a giant dick costume we, we have gold ideas <laughs> i don't know why we don't patent these yeah no these are great don't steal them guys please <laughs> but uh i don't know. do you want to say anything else about uh from beyond no, just that I really enjoyed it, and it made me love H.P. Lovecraft even more. Speaking of which, uh, I also got the Necronomicon, mm. the Necronomicon spell book, and the Gates of the Necronomicon book. So nice. thank you, H.P. Lovecraft. I'm about to be writing my own uh, demonic, esoteric book. Thanks to you, buddy. Perfect. In your honor. Just be sure to throw in some cosmic ancient beings and we all set. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm I'm definitely uh I'm I'm definitely gonna. Nice. It's mainly gonna include information about me, Samael. Of course. But in regards to a lot of my quote unquote helpers, you say <laughs> I'm sure we're all very much excited. I'm even for gonna that. make a I'm even gonna make a Barnabas sigil in there Ooh. and how to summon you. Perfect. It'll include um horror movies it doesn't take much it doesn't no so you guys can summon me whenever you want i can't promise that i'll show up i'm no, kind of no. lazy sometimes no, this, this <laughs> is only gonna work this book is only gonna work to summon you after you die perfect so there well quote unquote die yeah of course but you know as long as we're alive please don't try summoning rituals all it does is wake us up out of sleep and we don't know how to help you because we don't know who woke us up yeah, it's pretty annoying. I, re- I really only try to get up for, for this podcast. Like, so. my, my quest <laughs> is not world domination, all right? Them's the olden days. I have a new host now. This body just wants to relax and enjoy a lifetime. Next, next life, whatever it is, that's the world domination. But this life, I'm just trying to enjoy. You mean modern goals. That's yeah, fair. like, I mean, I mean, I'm just trying to relax, man. It's been It's been a hectic millennium, you know? Yeah. Well, enjoy your Necronomicon, I mean, we just Sam. lost. We just fucking lost Kobe. Oh, yeah. And Ooh. Kirk Douglas just died Yeah, today, and Kirk too. Douglas. Holy Jeez. shit. It's been a bad year already. <laughs> yeah. It's only been a month. It's It's been something. But you know what? We're still going to keep doing these shows no matter what. And uh, also with that coronavirus out there, be super careful. Um, mm-hmm. When you go to the malls, when you go to Walmart, when you go to... Do not touch the, the door handles, okay? Mm-hmm. Use your coat. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get the kung flu, you know. It's it's not good. No, just be sanitary, be safe. And to be safe, don't buy anything from China right now. Mm. Don't order off Wish. Yeah. No. No, don't order off AliExpress. No. Uh you can still eat Chinese food. It's not made in China and 
these people are in America and they're not eating bat soup. <laughs> just be careful out there, honestly. Yeah. With in all seriousness, like shit's crazy and you really don't know what can happen. Don't turn real life into a horror movie. Yeah, that's that's why we have horror movies. Yeah, don't because as soon as you get that <laughs> kung flu, Ugh. it's gonna turn into a body horror movie. <laughs> and you don't want to just be melting in a hospital bed. No. So guys, uh, I think that's all the time that we have. Take heed of those warnings. If Trust you watched, uh, if you watched from beyond, let us know what you think about it. If you haven't seen it yet, we both highly recommend it. Uh, let us know what you think about any of the news and things like that as well. You can hit us up on Facebook and Instagram at Grave Discussions or on Twitter at Grave Disc SRD. And uh, you can also check out our website, GraveDiscussions.net. So that's going to do it here for episode 93, Fiends. Yes, we'll see you next week for episode 94. And the weeks are closing in on a very, very special episode soon. Episode 100, guys. It's coming up. But until then, we'll see you next week on Grave Discussion. <laughs> We're coming. This has been an SRD production.